Hello everyone and good afternoon. I couldn't believe what I seen last night on Sky Sports. Manchester United have lost 4-0 to Crystal Palace and now that puts the Castle in a huge position for European football. Now, based on the maths, if Newcastle beat Brighton at the weekend, and when you look at Manchester United's fixtures, bear in mind our next game is Arsenal, a team that is chasing down the Premier League title. If both of those results go our way, Newcastle need just one point in their next two games to be guaranteed in the top seven. They actually could lose to Manchester United, and they could go ahead and lose to Brentford as well. But as long as Man U drop. One more point after that, of course, their final game after Newcastle. Because of our significant goal difference, we are, we're just guaranteed European football. All we need after Brighton, if Man U lose to Arsenal, is one point against either Manchester United or against Brentford. And you are guaranteed Conference League. Just like that from being a bit of a nervy situation now. Chelsea's a team that's been worrying me a little bit because they have picked up form now. They're starting to batter some teams and Cole Palmer is absolutely carrying those Guys, so I see Manchester United drop off now, and their significant injury crisis that seem to have at the back. It just puts Newcastle in a, an almost guaranteed situation. As long as we beat Brighton, I said it last week, we have to beat Burnley, we have to beat Brighton. We've done the Burnley game, now it's onto the Brighton one. But that is a huge boost before we even start to talk about anything else in this video. That is already a huge boost directed towards Newcastle because of their. Manchester United is just complete capitulation at the back end of this season. But hello there and welcome back. In less than two weeks' time, of course, I will be heading over to Australia because the second Newcastle play that Brentford game, they are going straight out to Australia to play a couple of end-of-season friendlies. So straight away, I've got a couple of announcements I'd like to make. First off, if you guys are new around here, make sure to get down there, hit that subscribe button, smash the like button if you are enjoying the content now. I never tend to announce that I have a Ko-Fi page, but I will in this case because uh, obviously I've got to speak a bit of a personal level now. Uh, as you guys know, every pre-season, in this case we've got end of season and pre-season fixtures, it costs an absolute bloody fortune. You can imagine uh, going away to Australia for a week and a half, then Japan potentially for two weeks, and the, the back end of July, start August, it is so, so expensive. So uh, I never like to promote this, but I do actually have a core five page, which basically means that if you guys ever want to donate anything directly to the channel, you can do so, or whether you want to pay for my, my pints or any drinks when I'm out traveling. It's just something there where if you guys ever feel like you owe me anything, which you don't, by the way, let me make that clear. But if you ever feel like you want to contribute to the channel, I've got a core fire page, so you can go on there. 100% of the donations go uh, straight direct to me. So uh, I'm only mentioning that because uh, it's super expensive at the minute. I'm going to be brutally honest. But uh, once we're out there, we've got plenty of videos coming out. Probably about a dozen videos or so. We've got all sorts going on with fan events. Of course, we've got the two games over there. It's just a great opportunity to see how big Newcastle United's fan base is globally in Australia. Because I think... People will be quite shocked, I, I would actually imagine, by how big the fan base is over there. So, looking forward to that. And finally, tomorrow, I will be going to Newcastle Blue Star for their playoff final. So, if you can get yourselves down there, obviously, I'll be doing a video tomorrow. It's a club that's actually quite heavily linked to Newcastle United. So, it's a good opportunity to go down there. Watch a bit of non-league playoff final football. And, obviously, if Blue Star win, then you can imagine straight away there'll be a pitch invasion. There'll be an, just, just a lot. It'll be an exciting time. I uh, didn't realise this intro has been going on about four minutes now, but I've got quite a lot going on. It's going to be almost daily videos on this pan because I've got quite a lot of videos planned. I've got quite a lot that's filtering around in the background. So stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming updates. But once again, thank you so much for the support. Three more matches now. And because of them yesterday, Manchester United thrown it away. Statistically speaking, as long as Newcastle beat Brighton, of course, you'd expect Arsenal to beat Manchester United then we are more or less guaranteed European football as long as we don't lose both games. One point would take us there because of how significant our goal difference is compared to Manchester United's shocking minus three. The on minus three, how? That's, that's incredible. I want to start off with quite an interesting topic that Craig Cope was talking about yesterday because it relates to a second story as well. But he was saying last night that the Castle were currently looking at targets especially on the right hand side of the attack now i think this is an area person that i've been screaming out for years now we just need a consistent regular goal score and a contributor on that right side 
Alan Wan's a hard worker, Murphy's a hard worker, but if we're going to be brutally honest, I just think we'll probably need better if Newcastle are to go ahead and be a regular potential top four side or a team that actually wants to chase for trophies. I just We need someone that's going to score that number, a bit like what Anthony Gorn can do. He's bagged those assists, bagged those goals. We just need a player that can come in and do that. Now, according to Craig Cook, targets that we are currently looking at, we'll start off with the main man last night. Elise from Crystal Palace. I absolutely adore this guy now. Crystal Palace, we know from a couple weeks ago, they spanked us in their backyard. A team that is just running off red hot form at the minute. And a team that, I mean, next season, if they can start like this from the, the get go, they might actually be in contention for European football. They seem to be a team that just knows what they're doing. They don't seem to be scared of anyone. And Elise is a key part of that team. The, he's bagged great numbers, nine goals this season. Someone that. If you would say yes to take Newcastle, I think every single person watching this video will probably say yes. He's a great player. I think he would be a fantastic sign. But Palace are a smart team and you'll cost an absolute fortune though. Uh, he's going to be a heavily targeted player as well. I think most teams in Europe, if not just the Premier League, are going to be looking for a player like at least say they'll go on for him. If any team like a Man City straight away, the teams like that are going to look, knock on this door. So Newcastle are going to be... Faced quite heavy competition to bring a player like Elisa in. And of course, for the FFP situation and the PSO and what Newcastle can and not actually spend it. It would be quite a lot of our budget. It'll probably be Newcastle's key marquee signing if you were to bring him in. As for our options on there, a couple of them being Nico Williams and Pedro Neto. So I'll show you the stats on the screen there now. This is the kind of worry that I've got with right hand side wingers. Um, to be fair, uh, Pedro Neto's got a decent amount of assists this season, but both of them have barely scored i mean nico williams hasn't even scored so uh straight away these aren't the kind of players that i'll personally be looking at but then again i, I i'm not the director of football not amanda slavery i'm not eddie howie so they're gonna know a lot more than me but personally for me i'd like to see someone that can bag consistent numbers i feel like that's quite important to get out of our team once we're going to actually bring players and we need players that are going to bag us goals on that right hand side of the attack so that's one thing that i think we're personally are lacking from that but the reason why the Lise story especially actually comes into play is because of the current negotiations with the director of football. So, of course, Dougie Fredman is the odds-on favourite to join the cast. Now, the current director of Crystal Palace, actually. So, that would be quite fascinating, wouldn't it, if we bring him in and all of a sudden the Lise is a key target for Newcastle to sign. So, straight away... Um, now, I quite like Palace's background. So, of course, we've got Dan Asher in from Brighton. Now, I think Palace is a similar mode and a similar build in the sense that it's a team that can just bring players in that are unknown bring players in that achieve you could argue barely anything in football and just make them absolute mega stars player like zaha of course as he to be fair was quite big a creepy off when he came over at least say just bringing these top level stars in ram Bissaka, just bring these players up and just turn them into big players and sell them for huge amounts of money now that's something that i think Newcastle actually need is to get all unknown players make them big and if they're not good enough for our team just to sell them for an extreme amount of money that's the that's the longevity that Newcastle's going to need long term to be able to sell players and to have all those funds available to spend straight away Newcastle have got the money with the ownership that they can't spend it due to FFP they can only spend what the club generates and to of course future rules and future regulations come into place which we discussed in the past but I think it's brilliant news for now. Uh, definitely something to keep an eye on. We'll be mentioning this all summer long, I imagine. But that right hand say we need heavy investment in there, in my personal opinion. We can't not talk about this in the video, but I want to say straight away, I was a buzzing to see Joel Litton, Amwan and Nick Pope all on that bench against Burnley. We've been lacking subs all season long, so to see some of our main players come back is incredible. But the reason why I'm discussing that now is because, well, there was one player that's missing, but we know... Because he's been chalked down. He is supposed to be back against Brighton. That man is Kieran Trippier now. And our player that Newcastle have been massively needing is that leadership at the back and that set piece takeaway. He is the player that my personal opinion will take to that next level. He's just got a great amount of experience already. He's a calm player. Yes, he has his moments this season, which we've unfortunately seen, but he's still someone that's reliable. He's someone that would do a job for you. And personally, for me, we needed them. We missed them. And Kieran Trippier yeah, is meant to be back at that Brighton game. Of course, he's been away in Dubai with a specialist, a bit of one on one time to try and get a bit of personal training in. He's back at the training ground now. He's getting prepared for this weekend and he is expected to be back in. So we've got four players that have now came back into the squad 
And I feel like that boost, especially again when we talk about a team that is the polar opposite, Manchester United are losing out in players. That boost for me should be the decider that gets the cast into European football. I'll be stunned if we don't get it from this point now. The Castle would have absolutely thrown it away if we don't get European football from this point forward. We've got our players back now. No more excuses. We're playing well. Picked up a huge result against Burnley. Do the same against Brighton and we're almost there. We are quite literally almost there. And finally, I want to finish this video off by talking about the current striker situation at Newcastle because news has came out regarding both Alexander Isak and Callum Wilson. So let's start with the number two first, Mr. Callum Wilson. Of course, scored against Burnley, he's back into the team now. I thought his comments were quite interesting going out of this season, actually, because this was a player that was already quite heavily linked in the January window. A player that was Percy wanting to potentially move to Atletico Madrid, a player that was wanting that opportunity. It hasn't happened. He got injured again, which has been quite frustrating for him. But he's back into the team. I thought his comments were quite interesting going into the, the Euro tournament. So his goal now is to finish the games off to make sure he gets back into the Euro score, which based to be fair, and I even told his form, the guy hasn't scored in 10 games. So I think Wilson might actually sneak in there. So Wilson's been discussing that. He's saying that he's contractually obligated to come back for pre-season. But I'm not going to lie, I thought the way he's worded those comments gives me the impression that we might be seeing the last of this guy. Now, for me, it's a tricky one because um, Wilson's value is quite high because of the fact that when he does play, he scores goals. This guy does score goals. He's a good striker and he's an absolute menace to play against. But the problem being is that you're playing half, half a season. This guy can't play more than half a season. So the problem in Newcastle's case now is because, well, one, how do we offload this guy? Because who's going to want to pay over £10 million for him when well, they know you're not getting more than half a season out of him? So Newcastle have got to be smart, strategic, and actually sell him where it's worth for Newcastle. I wouldn't sell him for less than £10 million because I don't think that the money's worth it for Newcastle. I think we're, it's better off actually keeping him and bringing a third strike in because his value is going to be worth more than that potential £8 to £9 million pounds that we could sell him for. But on top of that, if Newcastle receive more than potentially £15 million pounds or so for a guy that's in his 30s that can't play more than half a season. I think it's a no-brainer for us to sell him, so it's kind of a, a tricky balance that Newcastle has to make because, well, this is a player that I like, but he's older now. If Newcastle want to actually get some money for this guy, he's probably going to go now. So how did the clue go about it? Fascinating one, but I do get the impression that Wilson's probably expecting to leave in the summer based on the information that we've been given so far and his comments that he's made. It just gives me the impression that he perhaps knows his time is coming to an end. And speaking of strikers, let's talk about the main man now, Mr. Alexander Isak. He scored his 20th goal of the season against Burnley in this Premier League as well. Not, not 20 in all competitions, but uh, a player that was a bit nervous, actually, because he missed his pen. He was missing a couple of key chances. He was someone that I felt probably knew how big that 20th goal would be for him. So I feel like now that he has his 20th goal, he'll calm down a bit and he'll bag some more numbers for us. But it's an incredible season. And to be floating around in social media yesterday, like he is actually going to get his contract extension now. And we talked about this in the video last week, but I didn't want to kind of um, promote this on the video or have this, uh, I guess, as the thumbnail and title because it's not clear and conclusive evidence. It's just these ITK accounts. But the only reason why I'm talking about this one in particular is because, well, there was a bit of evidence behind it because, of course, there's been big talks last week about it. It is expected because of things that have been said in the press conference in the media that he is going to sign a contract extension. So, the fact this information has came out now, I thought I'd mention it briefly in the video because I believe it is going to happen regardless. So, um, of course, he's a brilliant player. Hugely important to keep him and Bruno. Can't stress that enough. But with European football, I think both will stay. As long as we get European football, I think both will stay. We've got no issues there. Both will be happy. We've finished in quite high here as long as we do hit that milestone. But Newcastle will be much better towards back end this season. And despite what's happened this season, still feels like a good campaign. Still feels like maybe, yes, a, a potential missed opportunity at times, but it still feels like a good season for Newcastle. We definitely wouldn't say no to the season that we had. There's been lots of good moments in there. And ultimately, you're getting top seven football from what's been a horrible first half of the year. So I can't complain about it. I think Newcastle have done well for themselves. And uh, we've got to finish on a high. We can't just say this now and then throw the games away. But as long as we beat Brighton, I'll say it again. Brighton's a huge game. The way we're playing and the way Brighton play, they've got a good win over Villa, but it's still not a team I'm, I'm awfully keen on. All honesty, I think the Castle are just a much bigger team than them. So it's important for us to do our job. But yeah, we do that. Man, we then lose to Arsenal. I'm telling you now, we've more or less got European football. It's more or less guaranteed at that point. 
So we've just got to do our job. But appreciate you guys watching. Of course, Newcastle Blue Star final tomorrow night. So we'll be down for that. If there's anything to talk about, there'll be a video earlier in the day. But if not, though, take care. Thank you all for watching. And we'll see you all in the next one.